pregame show. In Class B, the Lackawanna Steelers of Section 6 take on James Everett of Section 3. Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Sylvester, joined by Frank Stewart. And, Frank, the Lackawanna Steelers are lucky to be here today. Absolutely correct, Kevin. As the Lackawanna Steelers did not play their best game against Hornell last week, and the old adage is absolutely true. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than to be good. They weren't good in the first half, falling behind 12 nothing, but they managed to write themselves, get lucky, and win the game. Let's check out how they got lucky with the highlights from last week's game against the Hornell Red Raiders. Hornell gets on the board first one of three turnovers for Lackawanna. They capitalize on this one. Brian Young, three-yard touchdown in the afternoon, good as they went for two. Here's a second touchdown off another turnover. Bill Dett, the halfback pass to Kyle Johnson, that end for Hornell. 12 nothing Red Raiders at that point. Then right in the half. Watch Charles Kowalski and Kovac. Avoids the rush, takes the hit as he throws it, finds Sarika right there in the corner, two-yard line in for the end zone, and they go for two on the play there. Kowalski is fired up. After that touchdown pass, here's a two-point conversion play. Ray Turner, halfback back to his own. Kimmy Dickinson climbs a ladder, gets it for two. It was 12 to 8 at the half, and Ray Turner is fired up to come back to bite the Red Raiders in this football game right here. The two-yard touchdown plunge, and Lackawanna goes on to win that game 16 to 12 in that contest of midfield today. And boy, they were lucky in that game, but Charles Kowalski led them with a pass in that football game. But actually, not a surprise, especially for those of us at HTTV who've been kind of grooming this guy along and bringing him along, singing his praises for the last three weeks. Bill Moore, the head coach, calls him one of the secret weapons in high school football here in Western New York. This kid is unbelievable in a lot of different ways. He's run the ball for almost 1,000 yards this year. Passed the ball, excuse me, for almost 1,000. He's thrown the ball very effectively when he's needed to throw the football. He's got a lot of moxie. In fact, going back to the first quarter, he took a big hit. He was able to write himself to the back in the contest and then lead his team to victory. That kind of moxie, that kind of willingness to take the hit from the football game, that can't be measured statistically. That's a big, big news for the last one, Steelers. Yeah, he did have a big game last week against the uh, Hornell Red Raiders. The one thing they got to do, hang out of the football, three turnovers. Yeah, the inclement weather last week was a significant factor in the contest. As you saw, the last one, Steelers pumped the ball, especially Ray Turner, who normally is a very good ball handler. But he's got to get himself on track. He can count on Coach Bill Moore to practice all week long the idea of holding out of the football because at Father's State, the conditions will probably be the same as they will usually. Well, another thing Bill Moore probably stressed in practice, showing up on time for meetings and for the bus. Jimmy Dickinson, one of the top players on his team, missed the meeting during the week, and he missed the bus at third point in, in more Benston for the first series. They did the absolute right thing. You've got young players, high school players, who need some discipline, some direction. Bill Moore says to everybody on the team, look, if you don't show up on time, you do not play. The good thing about Lackawanna, they're coming to into this contest, is they've got some dinged up players who are going to be back in the right lineup for tonight. Let me tell you about James Wood, the Wood for 10 and 1 out of Section 3. The strength is on the offense, good balance attack here, Frank, and they got a guy, the name fits here, number 8, Adonis Kinsey. Over 1,500 yards rushing, and his career, 5,000 off purpose yards. So you see this guy probably on uh, punt and kick returning duties. The other halfback who spells in a little bit, Lambert, he's got over 700 yards. And the fullback, Wes Wilber, 600 yards rushing. And the quarterback is thrown for 800 yards and 16 touchdowns. So they're able to get that offensively. The defense has been okay. That's my, where they might have a problem with lack of speed. Special teams have been good. They kicked about 30 extra points and kickoffs. Had been well for Jamesville to win. So let's look at the keys for Jamesville to win in this football contest. Number one, they can't give up the big pass plays. Kowalski to Sirica was a big play for Lackawanna against Cornell. Look out for that. And Kowalski will also go to Dickinson in that game. They got to tame Lackawanna's big guns. Wade Turner, I mean, he's been the bread and butter all year long. The guy goes with 100 yards, teams every football game. Capable of going 2 250 and with uh, multiple touchdowns. So they got to watch Wade Turner and Kima Dickinson. And number three, they can't let Lackawanna get started off from the bat. I mean, if they do what Hornell does, when they get those turnovers early on in the game, it could spell doom for Lackawanna because they were kind of guiding themselves until they got that big play for the half. What about for the Steelers? Well, for the Lackawanna Steelers, their keys in the football game kind of obvious. Hold on to the football. Hold on to it as best you can. Do not give up the fumble for turnovers. In fact, if the ball gets loose on the turf, they've got to have players around the ball to recover it for their side. Certainly, pass interception is another factor in the contest, but the other thing that uh, they'll need to do is mix the pass in with the run. They like to run the football. They're a predominantly running team, but they have playmakers out there. They've got great wide receivers, good height, good speed, and can they get them the football? Charles Kowalski will take a lot of the burden in this football game for them against James Wilder. The other is outside speed. Use that outside side speed to their great advantage if it's a wet track, if it's a slippery track, if it's a snowy track, it kind of negates Lackawanna's speed. But if they're able to use their outside speed, Kevin, I'm not sure that James
here. We'll start off with the quarterbacks, and we give it a tie there. Both quarterbacks uh, pretty good there. Fourth room for the width. Uh, Kelly, 800 yards passing, 16 touchdowns. And, of course, Kowalski, a guy who's been unsung here for that one all year long. On offense, we're still again here, Frank. I mean, both teams are able to put the points on the board. They have big guns. Defense would ever go to Lackawanna here because of their speed and the way they're able to shut some teams down. Special teams. We go over to James Silver Ridge here. The kicking game has been excellent. The turn yardage again looks for Adonis on the, on the kickoff returns for James Silver Ridge. And any tangibles, we go back to Lackawanna here. What they went through last against Cornell to come back. Uh, we think that builds some character for their football team, especially uh, the situation where a couple players missing some minutes and stuff, Jimmy Dickinson, and having to come back the way they did. Who do you like in this football game, Frank? I'm a home guy. When it comes to the Western New York area in the Section 6 games, I like the Lackawanna Steelers. I think they got their, their bad game out of their system down to this playoff run. They've got one to get to the state championship in Syracuse. I think they can do it against James Oldewitt. I think I'm going to have to agree with, uh, with Lackawanna here. I know, big surprise for you here, but I don't think they've seen the speed uh, that Lackawanna has. Their defense is, you know, been suspect at times this year as James Earl DeWitt's. So I think they have to contend with the speed and just the speed on defense for Lackawanna. I think it's a big factor. I think you got to hurry and catch the second half of this football game. So we'll get you out of here. We'll send it out to Walter John Sears and Mark Collins. Now we're in snowy Rochester, and thank you, Kevin Sylvester. Uh, Mark Collins, we didn't expect this type of snow similar to last week, but we got it. A slippery field. Who knows who it will favor. Lackawanna comes in here as the number two school uh, in the B classification in the state. Gainesville DeWitt, number three. Uh, I originally was going with Lackawanna to win the state title. I'll talk about that in a moment. But your impression of this game? Well, I'll tell you, Walt, the weather's obviously going to be a factor. I think the field's going to be a little slippery than last week, but both teams got to play on it. I think it favors DeWitt, though. they got a big offensive line and a real powerhouse in the backfield. And one thing, Lackawanna does have some injuries coming into this game that we'll talk about. What's your prediction? Well, like I said, I think the big offensive line and a tough backfield, DeWitt's the favorite. Lackawanna really has to play good defense to win the ball game today. In my heart, I'm from Lackawanna. I'm rooting for them, but journalistically, i got to do the right thing. Janesville DeWitt, too tough in this game. I'm going with DeWitt to win it.
two first. DeWitt will have the option in the second half. Obviously, Coach Brown wants to see his defense on the field first. Yeah, and it's not a bad decision with the weather conditions the way they are, Walt. I mean, kicking the ball off, put your defense out there. It'll be interesting today, though, while you remember last week, uh, Hornell was, they were squib kicking pretty much everything and giving Lackawanna some decent field position. Today, I look for him to kick it deep, though, because they, they are strong to it. I don't see them holding back with anything today. Well, this could be a classic confrontation. Let's talk about the weather conditions. Icy field, snowy for the last four hours. It's going to be a tough track. Both of these teams have outstanding speed backs, great backs, and skilled positions. And they are outstanding. So as far as the speed element with this track, what will this do to it, Mark? Well, uh, not, not, so much with the, not so much with the speed, though, Walt. Um, it, it's actually the size of the backs. I mean, they have the big... And, uh, well, let's take a look at the coach's file here we see on the screen. Well, Coach Bill Moore of the Lackawanna Steelers, and we are handicapped without working uh, with the monitor at this point. He went to Baker Victory uh, High School, and of course you can see some of the athletic things that he's done in his life. He's been an outstanding coach for the Lackawanna Steelers. Went to Ottawa College, and Coach Bill Moore has got them in the semifinals. This is the second time the Steelers have gotten this far. And the kickoff is to Kima, or to Derek Gilbert, Gilbert side-stepping tacklers over the 30-yard line. A pretty fine return, and Lackawanna takes over possession for the first time in this game. Let's talk about the quarterback, Charles Kowalski, a 6'1", 171-pound junior who pulled the Steelers, Mark Collins, out of the fire last week with a couple of long passes to Sarika. A pretty good drop-back passer, a smart quarterback. Yeah, not, not a real strong arm well, but last year, or last week we saw a real clutch football player pulled up some big passes two touchdowns, and, uh, you know, look for him today. He's the leader on the offense. And the Lackawanna Steelers, if you're not used to them, obviously the big three, Wade Turner, Derek Gilbert, and Kima Dickinson. They line up with two players in the slot and an eye formation with Turner, and in motion right is the fullback lead. And this is Turner to the 35 as he bounces off a would-be tackler and gains some positive yardage. Let's take a look. That was Luke Rabadou on the tackle. Here's the offense for Lackawanna. Uh, we expected Davis. He's not in there, so Swanson will take his spot along with Dean at the left guard, Robert Cavanaugh the center, Robert Reese is the right guard, Mark Kowalski is the right tackle, and Robert Sarika is the tight end. Of course, Kowalski your quarterback. Fullback is Rashawn Lee. Wade Turner and Kima Dickinson are your halfbacks. Derek Gilbert is your split out, Mark. The Steelers have been hurt by injuries. Their offensive line is in shambles in this game. They had to make a lot of adjustments. Yeah, and a big test for them today, well. Second down and seven. James Hill to win a very strong defensive team also. And here's Turner trying to get to the outside. He can't make it. Crosses the 38 to the 39-yard line. It will be third down and short. James Hill to win on defense, and they're a good unit. Uh, the weak side end is 44, Randy King. The tackles are Darren Yama and Brian Adams. Bill Phelps, one of their best players, is the strong side end. Luke Rabadou and Kirk Riffinger, a real good player, are the outside linebackers. And Telling and June are the inside linebackers. Their secondary is the strength of their defense. Mike Lambert and Adonis Kinsley, a couple of Division I prospects at the corners, and Chris Kelly, the safety. They've got a great secondary, Mark. And in the last play you see, Lambert really puts a stick on Wade Turner, so they're out there to hit today, though. Third down and three. Lackawanna breaking the huddle. Kima Dickinson. Out to the left, lone back is Turner. Turner for the third time, he's got the first down. He must hang on to the football. Last week he had a little problem. A good start for Lackawanna in this game. And like you said, well, last week he did have it. He coughed it up twice, but a uh, real confidence booster for, 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 for Turner on the opening series here. They moved the chains, and that's one thing Lackawanna has to do today. They have to have some sustained drives and obviously keep the off the offensive side of the field. Well, because of injuries and suspensions, Lackawanna's usual starting tandem on the left side of Stampone and Messicar are not starting in this game and uh, on the offensive line. And they have substitutes Reese in there along with Dean. Uh, the man Stampone is out with a broken wrist. Messicar is going to play on defense only. Corey Pekigo also I don't think is dressed for this game, so they're weakening at the offensive line. From the 44, Kowalski. Back to pass. Rushes on. He throws deep. His man's there. And it's dropped. In and out of the arms of Kima Dickinson. And that looked like a catchable ball, Mark. Well, I'll tell you, it was awful close. Kinsey's lucky to get there at the last minute, Walter. That was six points for Lackawanna. A real nice toss by Kowalski. Kinsey beat, but as, as we see Kinsey,
basket there at the last minute to make a deflection. I think he underestimated Kowalski's arm on that play. Well, you really have to like the strategy of uh, Coach Bill Moore and, and his staff here running three times and then throwing the long ball. I mean, really going after a strong DeWitt team. Uh, this is just about an even matchup as far as uh, strength for teams. DeWitt a little stronger with the beef on the offensive line. Skill players about equal. Second down and 10 from the 44 of Lackawanna. And the Steelers moving to the right side is Turner. Looking for Brock. Makes the nice move. Takes it to the 50. Then he's game tackled. Boy, the hit. The Lance really hit hard. And they come flying with three, four, five backwards. And, and we see, though, the field conditions right there. Kinsey comes up to make the hit on Turner. And actually comes up and, you know, he breaks down. But uh, you, you got to control your speed a little bit today, Rats. Real slippery out there. He comes up. And is not under control, and Turner puts a little move on him. And Turner actually is running very hard today. He looks a little bit, he's running the ball a little bit higher than he was last week. Well, against a normal defensive team, Turner would take that for first down yardage and much more, but very good pursuit by this DeWitt team. Good linebackers. They're not that big on defense either. Their big boys play offensive tackle and they'll put in a nose tackle from time to time. That said, who's 279. Third down play, and here comes Joe West, and West appears to be close to the first down yardage. I think he has it. It depends on the spot. This will be a big call. He's over the 37 yard line near the 36. They needed to get to the 36 and a half. So I think he's got the first down. And it is a first down. And again, well, it's real important for Lackawanna. It's two first downs in this first series. Real important. But in talking to Coach Moore, he said, you know, we, we did make some changes at the offensive line. There's a couple guys that haven't even played on the offensive line this year. They've been playing defense. But he wanted some bigger beef up front. Um, one of the things DeWitt likes to do is they like to stunt. He said with the bigger guys on the offensive line, we'll pick up those stunts. And actually, and you see on that play, they're getting a good service with the big boys up front. 8.58 to go in the first quarter. No score. Lackawanna with two consecutive first downs. Talking about John Dean and Robert Reese at 222 and 299 on the offensive line. First time this year. Kowalski throwing deep. Red the needle and it's batted away. A fine defensive stop there by Mike Lambert. And he was all over the intended receiver, Dickinson. Great coverage on that by Lambert. But another nice pass by Kowalski in this type of weather to put it up. Well, he threw it about 35 yards and it was right on the numbers. <laughs> Uh, that's an interesting matchup with uh, Keenan Dickinson and also Dilbert. Uh, I was wondering to see who they were going to match up with them, and uh, they go with Kinsey on Dilbert, and they got Lambert uh, matching up with uh, Dickinson. Good matchups, both sides. Well, the strange thing about high school football, I'm from Lackawanna, and you really don't know about the other team. Now, I found out a lot about James Dilbert DeWitt talking to Coach Bill Brown, and the Lackawanna fans really don't realize just how strong this team is. But right now, Lackawanna is playing a very good first couple of drives that in the opening minutes. And here's Turner going left. He's bottled up. Taken down. Hogtied and thrown down by Kirk Riffling. And I do like this kid. Yeah, I, I knew it wouldn't be long before he started calling his name. Well, this guy leads the team in tackles. He's got 110 tackles. He's got three or four interceptions. He's all over the field. Both <laughs> and defensively. And pound for pound, toughest player out in the football field as far as to what's concerned. Well, by passing on first down, Lackawanna puts themselves in that second and long. And now they come up third and long for the first time in the game, third and nine. So that's one other thing that Riffinger really does well. Well, he blitzes real well. He's got seven sacks this year. That was Coach Moore's concern. That's why he has those big guys in there trying to pick up the blitzes coming through the A and the B gap. So look for it on this play here. Well, I think a good, good move by Coach Bill Moore and his staff to get the beef in there against this stronger defensive team from DeWitt. Try and give his players a little bit more protection. And it's an inside handoff. This is going to work. Team of Dickinson, first down, Steeler. Well, they fooled him. Misdirection, and this is a, a play that DeWitt likes to run. A lot of misdirection. I'll tell you, give some credit to uh, number 79 for Lackawanna, Corey Pigo, who's just, uh, he's one of the guys who just stepped in before the game. He has a heck of a block there to spring it, and he was blocking the left anger, which was, uh, he's a tough kid to block, but really nice block. Big yardage, big first down. Yeah, Pokigo is in at the right tackle spot now as they had to adjust the line. Good job. I wasn't certain if he was one of the kids suspended. Obviously not. And running play. This will go nowhere. And Rashawn Lee is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. See the initial hit there by Randy King, number 34. And then a lot of help with Yemma also went on the stop. Looks like someone just missed their assignment on that one. It was pretty, 
pretty much the first play, though, that they haven't executed well from that point. Now the Steelers, like, can do to the wit what teams have done to them in the past, frustrate them. Keep the ball away from their big guns, and that's frustrating when you don't have the football, Mark. We've already played over five minutes, and DeWitt has not had a single offensive play. So second down and 13. Lackawanna looking sharp here on this first drive. Three first downs so far. And here's Turner. He's got blocking. Turner's to the 30. 25. Nice run by Turner. And he's pushed out of bounds again. And again, it's 28 feet with Finger. And if we get a look at that, well, it looks like Sarika actually might have gotten away with a little hole there on the end. He sustains his block. Actually, it looks like he had his arm hooked up underneath the defensive end. But uh, Turner, okay, they're moving the ball. And this is so key. I mean, this is the Lackawanna that we're used to seeing the, during the regular season. They haven't played their best football so far in the playoffs. And this is just a key drive for them. Yeah, we were concerned that we both picked the win on the strength of their team, James Ray DeWitt, and the way Lackawanna played. They performed against Hornell. They certainly looked like a different team uh, than they looked against Hornell in this first drive. They looked very sharp. Third down and a yard. And, of course, you've got Turner. I'd like to see him get the football. Third and one. Here's Turner sweeping left. Needs a block. Doesn't get it. Spins away. And he's short of the first down yardage. He was hogtied and thrown back. Looks like the big fellow in there, number 65, uh, in on the stop. It, uh, yeah, Nick Bissett. <laughs> yeah, they put set in at the nose tackle position. Fourth in the yard. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll substitute the set at nose tackle and Donahue, who goes 240, at the strong side end to get some beef in there on third and short situations. And this will be an interesting play call right here, Walt. I mean, well, well, the one thing if uh, Lackawanna I mean, can't do today is... Uh, first like, down. Oh, big one. You got well, the first down. That'd be a big call. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This field is crowned so oddly that sometimes when the chains come on, you get a, a deceptive view. And a few years ago, uh, Corcoran had a real tough spot uh, late against Williamsville South up by a touchdown, and it cost them the football game. We thought they had a first down, and they didn't get it. Yeah, and you don't notice the crown that much the way with the way the snow is on the field, but there is a big crown in the middle. So Lackawanna moving the football four consecutive first downs. And the Steelers quarterback, Charles Kowalski, 0 for 2 on the drive. Here's Turner trying to get outside. He does. Turns the corner. Turner picks up what looks like another first down. And you have to be impressed with Lackawanna. And Lackawanna, obviously, Mark, this is exactly the perfect drive for them to start this game. And this is exactly the game for I mean, this is the game plan that he's going with today. Like I said, he's using the bigger linemen to stop the uh, stunts and stuff at the middle. And he said, with the bigger linemen, you know, we get Turner outside, and that's what we're, and, uh, you know, it's hard to do in this kind of weather, but it's been successful so far. We've been getting them outside. Well, I'll tell you what, this has got to be the longest drive of the season for the Lackawanna Steelers, time consumption-wise, over six minutes, because they score fast. They have quick backs, and they score fast when they score. They have really eaten up the clock. Clock has stopped with six minutes remaining in the first quarter, no score. And Lackawanna now has a first and ten on the 12-yard line of James Hill DeWitt. And here comes Turner. Fielding a block is Dickinson, but coming up to make the stop. Number eight on the play, who got there quickly. That's a substitute player for the Rams. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's Kinsey. Adonis Kinsey on the stop. But yeah, what they're doing, they're, they're just lining the power up. They're putting uh, Lee... And he got Lee Dickinson, and I'll tell you, Lee throws two nice blocks. He knocks two guys right on their back. But they're just going with the power while they're trying to seal off the two inside linebackers, and they're going outside, and it's working. 5.25 to go in the first quarter. And it's a second down and nine situation, and Lackawanna calls a timeout. So, so far, let's uh, talk about the J James uh, Bill DeWitt team coming in here, Mark, because we haven't seen their offense. But, but when they do... Adonis Kinsey has 13 Division I scholarship offers on the table. Uh, Mike Lambert, the other wingback, is also a Division I prospect. They've got another Division I prospect and seven Division III prospects. That's something. That's something for a high school football team. And like you say, with, with Kinsey, it's not, you know, it's not the small Division ones looking at them, Walt. It's Syracuse, Michigan State, Boston College, some big-time football. And, and when you look at their backfield, I mean, the Wolfanger, they have... Uh, they have Reverend in there, and they also have Adonis. I mean, these guys are averaging over seven yards of carry, all of them consecutively. And one, two, three, four guys at the backfield 
the seven yard advantage. I mean, well, you, you look at a second and three every time you give them the ball. Yeah, so it's exactly, the game's going exactly the way they, they want it. In fact, some of the players going on looking at the Division Three possibilities next year include uh, Bill Phelps and Nick Bissett, Luke uh, Rabadou, P.J. Hunter, uh, Lambert's a D1 prospect, Wes Wilbur's a D3 prospect, uh, Chris Kelly's a D1 prospect uh, in lacrosse, believe it or not. Uh -huh. and, the, and the funny thing is, Walt, I mean, you know, we see Lackawanna all year, and they have some serious talent on this team. Oh, they really do. We're not used to seeing the team on the other side having as much talent, and that's kind of what's unique about this ball game. They really do, but we wanted to fill in our Western New York audience on this opposing team. They're very strong. Lackawanna, great job so far. Kowalski back to pass. Long ball, dangerous, up for grass. Caught! Touchdown! Gilbert! He just went up and got it, Mark. And that's what I'm saying. That's an interesting matchup for Walter going one-on-one. -on -one. That was Lambert trying to cover a man-to-man. And Gilbert, as we know, is going to win that nine out of ten times. You just throw the ball up. Walter did a nice job just lobbing it to the corner of the end zone. Gilbert just goes up. It's a jump ball. And I tell you, it's going to be a tough matchup for Duet today because the big receivers know how to get up in the air and come down. Wow, what a pass. I mean, that is a long pass across the field towards the corner of the end zone. That's a ball that uh, normally would float, and Kowalski showed a strong arm on that one. Now the Steelers, uh, who never go for a single point, will try for two. Leading 6-0 on a tremendous drive. Kowalski going to pass. Throws, caught! Two-point conversion, Lee! Wow, what a start for Lackawanna. What an incredible catch by Lee. Not only the incredible catch, after he caught the ball, if you look at it, Walt, he isn't in the end zone. He has to tightrope down to get inside the cone. He makes the concentration, makes the catch, and then he gets inside the cone, too. Just an, a great start for Lackawanna. Well, we'll watch it again on the replay as he'll tiptoe the goal line. They tiptoe through the two left line. When he gets two points, that's a big two points. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there's more tulips are going throughout there. That's a tough to rip defensive unit. And Lackawanna, I mean, this is what they needed, Walt. I mean, we haven't seen a long, sustained drive like that. And that's the way you beat a team when it, when it has an offense with, you know, guys averaging over eight yards a carry. you got to keep them keep off the field. And a lot of time left in the game. Five minutes and 14 seconds in the first quarter. But if you're from the Steel City, you have to be very happy at this point. And I'll tell you, I mean, what a, what a way to set the tone for the Lackawanna Steelers in their first drive. Now the team believes in themselves. I mean, the last two uh, playoff games, you know, Springfield takes it down and scores on the opening drive. Really, you know, ran all over Lackawanna. And then last week, Cornell pretty much had their way with them. Not only did they believe in themselves, but last week... Uh, only out of beaten by this DeWitt team, 48 to 18. They had them like 38 nothing, and they got to come in here and they're shocked. Yeah, I they, mean, well, what's going on? Yeah. Hey, we're down eight yeah. nothing right off the bat. Yeah, and for Lackawanna last week, while well, you know Hornell really stuck to the game plan, played well in the first half, and Lackawanna had their head down. And, and like I said, today is a different story. They score on the first drive after probably hearing a lot about this DeWitt football team and all the big stars they have. I mean, this is a good start for them, and we'll see if the DeWitt can rise to the challenge here when they get the ball the first time. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we went down and talked to Coach Bill Brown and James Will DeWitt, and uh, they were extremely confident, extremely confident in the warm-up. Like we said, a long way to go here in the football game, and Sarika to kick it off, and you've got some dangerous men back there. Kingsley's one of them. And the ball bouncing around away from Lambert and out of bounds. Lambert and Kinsley do the return work. Uh, Lambert's got like four touchdowns on punts. Kinsley's got one on a kickoff return and one on a punt. And let's talk about James Will DeWitt as they have the football for the first time in the game. The Red Rams and their quarterback is a real good one, Chris Kelly. Six foot on the slate side at 150 pounds, over 800 yards passing, and... 16 touchdowns, so he's had a, a monster year. Yeah, and he's the, you know, he's, like I said, just like Kowalski, he's the leader on the offense for DeWitt, but I'll tell you, look back, I mean, you look at him, well, Wes Wynn was 6'3", 209 pounds, Lambert's 5'10", 190, and you got Kinsey at 6'3", 190, I mean, there, there, there's some heavy backs in that backfield. Well, can they stop him now? Let's see. This is a wing T formation, and a running play, and short yardage, for Wilbur, actually about five yards. Let's take a look at the Lackawanna defense. It's left end Sarika, Larry Lewis getting a start at one tackle. Joe West and Doug Harding, some moves on the defensive line. Mike Messicar back for this game. He's a good one. Shannon Richardson and Ray Turner will play linebackers with Stan Pone injured. Dickinson and Bill with the corners. Feeney and Lee in the defensive secondary. A gain of five yards by Wes Wilbur. The, the wing T formation is very tough to stop and very deceptive. Here is a great play by Lackawanna, following up the main man, Adonis Kinsley, for a huge loss. And that was a great play. Larry Lewis just shoots one of the gaps. 
quarterback. Good protection. Throws it up deep. Throws it up the grab. Batted away. Actually, the receiver had the best shot at it, and he actually knocked it down. The losing tight end, Darren Yemma. I think it was a bad selection by Kelly there. He rolls out. He had a river in the flat with no one from Lackawanna within 15 yards of him, and he doesn't elect to just dump it off to him. He goes deep and is lucky to not have it picked off. And the punting unit comes on. Not a great series for DeWitt, three and out, Walt. Well, in Lackawanna, we pick them in the big championship. <laughs> they picked well, against them in the pregame. Uh, we, I, we, I, I think I talked you into it. I think we were hedging a little bit. This anger uh, into punt it away. Pretty nice punt. Dangerous feeler there. Dickinson at the 33. 35, 40, 45. Midfield and pushed out of bounds. And there's got to be a flag there, but there it is. Wait, you got to throw a flag on that. Wolfhanger takes out a little frustration on uh, Dickinson on that one. Really put his helmet in there. And Bill Phelps just grabbed him and threw him down the railway. Gives him a dead ball. But I'll tell you, that is a big penalty right now, Walt, because that's a good return as it is. Good field position. Now they get to tack on the penalty. That's a dumb play by Bill Phelps. You were the better players on the team. You don't want to get too, you know, you don't want to get down too, by too many points against the Lackawanna Steelers. They're too powerful. He's a senior, you know, and already we talked about the frustration setting in. Well, I think they're a little shocked that Lackawanna came out and put one in the end zone in the first drive and then held up pretty strong on defense. Now, this is obviously one game I hope my prediction's wrong. Well, you know, we get to pick again at the halftime. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> From the 30-yard line, Lackawanna in great shape. If you just joined us, they marched a tremendous march all the way down the field, uh, almost the length of the field. A terrific drive, and they picked up five first downs in route to a touchdown pass to Gilbert, and then a two-point conversion to Lee. And it's a second man through, and it's Wade Turner coming up for a loss. And again, it's Kirk with. Finger. Actually, they faked that with a turn. They gave it to Dickinson, and uh, Kinsey comes up, makes a nice open field tackle in the middle of it. Turner ended up with the football. Number three there, as you see, walking back. And he got dropped for a loss. It was a, a sort of a trick play, possibly. Second down and 11. And uh, with Finger, Mark, has uh, really made a lot of tackles here. Yeah, and like I said, they, they, they are actually, the purpose that they got the big guys in is working. Now, they're not letting him stun up the middle. He's making a lot of tackles on the outside. You have to think the Red Rams of James Earl DeWitt are a little early in the pass here as Kowalski has started off strong. That ball's fumbled. There's the Achilles heel of Lackawanna, and Kowalski saves him again. He did that last week, too, alertly falling on a loose ball. And Turner again, that's his first fumble of the game. We'll have to chart that. Yeah, well, you, you're going to see today with the weather, but the, the key is, is to get back on top of it and not let it shake your confidence at all. Last week I thought Turner coughed up two in the first half and he was down on himself. And, uh, you know, you just got to shake. I, you know, I actually saw him at halftime. I saw his coach talking to him saying, just shake it off. I mean, there's a lot of football to be played in the second half. So this will bring up a third down and 14 for Lackawanna. At the 36-yard line of James Earl DeWitt in a passing situation, Gilbert's out to the right, Dickinson out to the left, Kowalski straight back to pass. Now looks in trouble, rolls left, now he's going to scramble, good yardage by Kowalski, and he's under tackle, well, well short of the first down yardage, and the Steelers uh, will have a dilemma here, they'll probably punt the football on fourth and long. It probably wouldn't be a bad decision because today with the footing, you're not going to a lot of booming spirals and maybe just kick this one and get it down there and try and down it somewhere inside the 10-yard line. And his field position is so key today. Now let's see what decision Lackawanna comes up with. 127 to go in the first quarter. All Lackawanna leading 8-0. Shocking the, the Jamesville DeWitt Red Rams. But as I was talking about, well, I think that's one of the interesting matchups is, you know, Lackawanna with Dilbert and Dickinson on the outside. Pretty much takes away DeWitt's two big players in, in Lambert and Kinsey. they got to match up one-on-one. -on -one. And, and the key is, you know, who's going to pick up Sarika? That's who I'm wondering because they're playing with the big guys against the big guy. And Sarika actually had two huge catches last week. And it's going to be interesting to see who picks him up. He's a big tight end, and, and I haven't really seen him. He hasn't ran too many patterns. Yeah, he's been staying and blocking, but that'll be an interesting matchup. See who's got to watch him today. Kowalski picked up eight yards on that run. Puts him in uh, position to go 
Wolford on fourth down in about seven, and I think, you know, you have to go for it. This is a big defensive stand for James Ward to win. They can hold him here off the board and not get rattled anymore and get right back in the football. Yeah, that'll, that'll change, swing the momentum a little bit because if Lackawanna does go in here and score, yeah, it, it's really going to, you know, it's going to pop their bubble. You know, James Ward DeWitt lost only one game this year, and that was 36-22 to to Casanova, who at that time was number two in the states in the B classification. They came back and beat Casanova 33-28 in the finals to get here. Mm -hmm. And I talked to their coach about the loss, and he said that that was probably the, Casanova had a back, I believe his last name was Ivy. He said, this kid was like the only guy we saw a year that was a little bit like Turner and had Turner's speed. So, and he said, we had some trouble with him in the first game. And, uh, you know, today, that's the question, whether or not he can handle Lackawanna's speed. Now, Lackawanna, the big three you start off with, Turner, Dickinson, Gilbert. That's the big three. And they've got other weapons, too. Kowalski and, and Lee and Sarika receiving Joe West out of the backfield. Fourth down and eight. Kowalski. Double reverse. And, the and a pass from Gilbert, who's in trouble. Now he throws wide open and dropped by Kowalski. Interesting play there. He would have never had the first down yardage. As Kinsey was right there with Kelly and company, but... It was really a, an interesting call. Interesting call, to say the least, for all <laughs> his conditions. I mean, you don't want to be handing the ball off too many times on one play, and there they hand it off on the reverse. Well, he tries to go back to Kowalski, but uh, obviously they had that one well read. If you watch the replay, you saw that they actually executed it very well. But uh, the defense sort of came in there and bottled up Gilbert. I think he wanted to take off and run at first with the football. And then he had the option to pass. They had all kinds of options on the play. And I think Coach Bill Moore, that was a nice call at, at this point. Yeah, he's game. mixing it up a little bit, but, uh, you know, they had that one long, sustained drive, pretty much running the ball, with Turner outside, and, you know, using a good mix of plays. Kind of like to see him stay with it. 1-0-2 to go in the first quarter, and if you're from Lackawanna, you've got to be loving it right now. And the fans getting into it, and again, you know, the high school playoffs, happens once a year at Rochester Fowler Stadium. The semifinals, why do we have to have such miserable conditions? But it is football conditions. And, well, and both teams, like I said, the opening, both teams have to play with the conditions, so you know, it, it makes it even. And Mark Collins, you're a football player, and uh, you probably like playing this kind of weather. Well, yeah, I played free safety, and, uh, you know, in this kind of weather, free safety is kind of fun to play because the quarterbacks can't really put the zip on the ball to get yourself some easy interceptions, but really... You can really lay some good sticks on it, too, because you're coming up, and the backs can't cut that well. If you get a good beat on someone, you can really let them have it in this kind of weather. And it hurts in this cold weather, too. Though. Well, Lackawanna smarting from a suspension of six players due to academics and a couple of injuries, the key one to Sam Pone, and they are not at full strength, but they are off to a great start. Now, let's see what DeWitt can do on this drive. And here comes our main man, Kinsey. Kinsey dragged down by Dickinson after a gain of a yard. Lackawanna with great pursuit. Right now it seems that they're spotting Dickinson to shadow Kinsey. Oh, and, 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 uh, yeah, there's no question. <laughs> you know, tailing him all day long. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, and Dickinson there, he takes on River on the block and just gets rid of River, just tosses him to the side and makes a big defensive play. Lackawanna is not backing down at all today, though. Well, they ran River once, official timeout. The first play of the game, they had a nice game for five yards. The big fullback, uh, who's 6'3", 209, really has developed into a tough football player, has really come on, according to Coach Bill Brown and the staff, the last four or five football games. I think under these conditions, getting the ball more up the middle. Yeah, and talking to Bill Moore this week, he said he, he, he did watch him play last week, and he said he thought he was actually the toughest back they had. And Mike Lambert, over 700 yards, the wing back, he's 191 pounds. And, of course, Adonis Kinsey, second down and eight. And here comes Adonis to the right, caught and dropped, and that's Messicar. You don't run laterally against Mike Messicar. He's a good one. And he just plays that, I mean, he just played that one perfect. Well, he reads it, he sees the handoff, and he just shoots the gap. And good lateral movement there, I mean, because Kinsey is quick. And I'll tell you, Messicar, you know they missed him last week. Uh, that's a big, big plus to have him back in the lineup today. And that's the end of the first quarter as it wound down very quickly and a great quarter for the Lackawanna Steelers. From Rochester, New York, Malvern Stadium and the U of R the score, the Lackawanna Steelers 8 and Janesville DeWitt, nothing.
third down play and 10 for the Red Rams. Kelly to pass, drop! Oh man, great pass. Right over the middle, right in the hands of Yemma, the bruising tight end, and uh, Mark Guerin should have caught that. Oh, yeah, and that's the catch they needed because that's the spark that their offense needs right there. I mean, that's a big, big yardage there, and, and to drop that one, that's kind of the way things are going so far for them. Well, that's a pass where you throw to that spot, and he put it in there perfectly. Yeah, it was a nice timing pattern. Defender for Lackawanna had absolutely no shot at stopping that one unless it was dropped, and it was dropped. And the punter comes on with Fanger, and Lackawanna's dangerous here. Gilbert back along with Dickinson. Dickinson runs up, fumbles the football. Gilbert falls on it. That's the second Steeler fumble in the game, and uh, as true to the regular season when they fumbled all those times, like 36, and only lost 11 of them. <laughs> and, and the one thing that uh, really makes Coach Moore crazy is this punt formation. He specifically puts three guys back there well, so that doesn't happen. So that they don't drop the ball, and so that it doesn't get by them. I mean, he has all three of them back there. And last week, it, it, they didn't do a real good job, and, and today, they haven't started off on the right foot. Now, my question as a football man, Maybe these players or the coaches watched the Hornell game and got a little overconfident the way Lackawanna performed last week. Well, you know, I, I think uh, so far Lackawanna is just a totally different team than what we've seen in the last two playoff games. Yeah, they certainly are. Here's Turner. Turner busting it up the middle. Hits the seam and makes it to the 49-yard line, almost a first down. Didn't look like much developing, but he cut back and then cut up field. And as we say, a totally different team. And Turner's a totally different kid today. I mean, even at the end of this run, it's a great run. If you look at him, watch at the end of the run. He holds on and puts his other arm over the ball and holds on to it. Like last week he fumbled to, but today he's making sure that, you know, he's got that right in his belly where it should be and some nice yardage. And he picked up the first down. And Lackawanna, I believe that's the sixth first down of this football game. They continue. You look impressive. The ball at their own 49-yard line. 11.22 to go in the first half. Lackawanna 8 to Witt nothing. And here comes Turner right. He's got some room. 45. He's close to another first down. As he slips and dragged down near the 41-yard line. You get a good-looking tackle yeah, there. He gets horse collared at the end there. But I'll tell you, it's working for him right now. Well, what they're doing, they got the big guys inside. They're closing off the gaps. No blitzing. And they're giving Turner time to get outside because when they're not getting through on those stunts, Turner's getting the ball and he's getting time to get outside. Once he gets outside, obviously, you know, he's the quicker of the two and he's getting some big yards for him, but it's working perfect for him. And if you're wondering, like one in New York, the suburb of Buffalo, New York, right next to Orchard Park. And of course, James will be right, right to the east of Syracuse. Sort of like an Orchard Park situation, an affluent neighborhood. They're racially balanced teams similar to Lackawanna. And a lot of great talent on both sides of the football for both teams. Second down and one. And here's Kowalski. He's in deep trouble. Huge trouble. He gets out of it momentarily and he tackles for a loss. Yeah. I don't know if that was a planned play or a missed hand. Yeah, it was. No, it's just Dickinson. And Dickinson knows he missed his block there. He's, he's saying, my fault on that one. Because he does. He missed his block. If he makes the block and Kowalski gets around the corner, they would have to go hit him. You see him. He misses his block. And 50 gets around him, and, and, and then he gets a lot of pursuit from the inside. But Keenan Dickinson makes that block. And as I said, today, though, it's tough to pick out guys and say, hey, you missed this block because the field conditions are real tough. Now, third down and six. And Kowalski lost of five on that play. So possibly in a passing situation. 8 nothing Lackawanna leading, approaching 9.40 and counting remaining in the first half. Keep it on the ground with Turner. He's not going to get there. Push back, follow up, and the punting unit will come on to the Steelers. And on that play right there, I think, we, you know, while we see the strength of the DeWitt defense, is right up the middle, like I said, with Riff Anger in there. they got a big front four. They're physical. Tough to run against them inside the tackles. I think we have a record for shovelers out there, too, at one time. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't have one of the... Uh, you know, the uh, brushes on the front, like last week with the tractor, I almost got taken out by that thing, but, you know, I'm surprised they don't have one today. They're doing a great job on the school. It's almost clear. So we can do fun it away. Kinsey, very dangerous, and Lambert, as dangerous, back to receive it. Nice punt. You better cover this guy, Lambert. He's returned four this year for touchdowns. 15, oh, 20, 25, 30. 33-yard line, and Lambert a fine return for Mike. Mike Lambert, he's a real good one. That was a nice return, but give some credit to the rest of his teammates. They really set up the wall for him nice. He just 
set to get to the outside, which he does. And once he gets to the outside, the picket fence is set, and he just runs right up the sideline, which is, gives him some, here it is here, he just gets outside, they get a nice wall, and luckily he doesn't run this one all the way. Like, Lackawanna's got a lot of speed to catch him, but he's in field position. Well, so far, uh, Lackawanna, they took Dean and Reese out of their defensive unit, went for a quicker defensive unit with uh, Lewis starting, where Lewis has done well in Harding, and it's worked. All the moves have worked for Coach Bill Moore and his staff so far. Thunder football! Loose on the truth. Lock and roll the ball. Yeah, that's a big break. There's the first big turnover. And there's the big guy that comes up with a Mexico. How much did they miss him last week? I mean, Stan Pollard actually filled in nice last week. Plays with a broken bone in his arm. Makes 20 tackles. But Mexico is really, he's quick and he's the leader out there. And, and there's... We see the results right there, Rep. That is a huge turnover. Yeah, Messicaro and Stampone have great tackles. They also play on the offensive line together when they're healthy. Yeah, and you know Stampone got a few of them today not being able to play in this ball. Oh, yeah, he's one of the best in the area. 222 and 20 tackles last week. So Lackawanna in the 33-yard line. Kowalski up top looking for a quick six. Up for Graves. Almost caught. Wow, what a great catch that would have been by Dilbert. Just missed it. Well, like I said, they like that matchup. That time, Kelly, though, gets over and helps out a little bit with Lambert because I'm telling you, Lambert has got a tough match with Dilbert all day, and they know it. They're just going to go to it all day, and, and it's tough on first down, but they, they wanted to score quick there off that trail. There's the pass right there. Puts it up there, and all he can do is get it up in the air. He's going to win that match. Thank God that Kelly came over to help him out. Well, he really goes up and gets the football, Derek Dilbert. Big time possible for a red. Six foot four. Yeah, I tell you, all these guys, Dilbert, Turner, Diggins, they all play basketball too. <laughs> he's like Frank Stewart. He's got big hands. That's why he's able to grab that ball. But Frank wears gloves in cold conditions. Dilbert doesn't. Second down and ten. You, got, you really have to like the aggressiveness mark of Lackawanna here on offense. Here comes Turner looking for a block. He won't get it. Grab and there's that linebacker again. Whiffinger. Kirk has had a ton of tackles in the first half, and he's not really that big of a fellow at 165. Yeah, five foot ten. I'll tell you what he does well, though. He really doesn't look at it here. He knows how to take the angle. He gets the angle. He knows where Turner's going, and he just gets there before he does and makes a tackle. And he's a sure tackler. Look at this here. He gets him with a good shoulder pad tackle here. And, and Turner's a pretty loose back to, to bring down the open field. And Kirk's a very aggressive linebacker. Very aggressive. Yeah, pound for pound, toughest kid on the team right there. Yeah, he's about 160, so that's... He's giving away pounds to everyone. No, well, Lackawanna with golden opportunities to pad the lead here in the first half. Haven't done it. Third down and 13, but they're always one step away with Dilbert on the alley oop passes. And Lackawanna might have taken too much time. They have. And that, you know, that's exactly what that pass is to Dilbert, the old alley oop. Right, like I said, all Dilbert, Kima Dickinson, they're all, both of them are great basketball players, and they can get up, and I'm sure they get up on the backboards too, but. Well, it surprises me, Rob. I mean, right there, a big turnover like that. Lackawanna moved that first series. They went the whole length of the field by running the ball. So it surprises me that, you know, take some more clock, take some more time off the clock, big turnover, run the ball a little bit, that, that first down pass. You know, Lackawanna is so used to scoring with their big players and scoring quick. Uh, today, I think they slowed it down a little bit. They got the lead. Yeah, you see how sports is, Mark. Uh, everyone expected a lot of points. Coach Bill Moore, I didn't hear that from Coach Brown, but... We haven't had points. It's only 8 nothing. Blitz is on. Nice call here, Turner. Needs a block. Gets one for Mexico. Doesn't pick up the second one. As the defense really closed quickly, that was where that might break for a long one. <laughs> but they, they called the screen just at the opportune time. Because that's the scouting report on that with me. He likes to blitz, and boy, he is a good blitzer. But that time they said, come on, we want to blitz. We want you to blitz. And they just set it up. And luckily, Turner doesn't break this one for a long time. That was a good play. I don't see who got in there to break up that block. The, the, the nose tackle yeah. actually got got in there and made the hit, and then he was joined by Lambert. And that's going to give him a lot of credit coming from the you know the nose position and get to the outside. Fourth down, they'll probably go for it in this situation again. Let's see, it looks like they have a different unit on. With fourth down and nine. But they went for it again last time. I, like I said, though, in this situation, I... I I take my chances of putting it one or two times right down here, Ross. And like I said, they're not going to get off a boomer today. Now they're going to take a five-yard penalty and then probably punt the football. But when you get into uh, this close, 
into the opposition zone. It's not a bad idea on fourth down and nine to try it. Yeah, I, I think this is all right, though. This is a, a good call here because Lackawanna's defense obviously have played well. They, they you know, DeWitt hasn't moved the ball against them. And if the Lackawanna wins very well, the defense is going to win this ball game. Yeah, we got on so late because of problems here. Uh, Lackawanna's defense really is the key to this game, not their offense, and their defense has played superb. Here's Sarika to punt. And he does it again, that low-line drive, uh, effective kick, does not want to give up a return, and it's like a coffin corner kick upfield. Yeah, that's kind of tough to do there with the conditions, and they didn't gain much yardage on that punt. I thought he was just, you know, should have booted it away. Well, I'm going to tell you what, out of all the kickers we've seen, Sarik is one of the best we've seen in Western New York this year. Oh, yeah, great leg. But in this, with these conditions, he would have just gave it his regular kick. I don't think he would have got it to the end zone, but still, tough field position for DeWitt. You know, great leg, and he also has the ability to spot kicks inside the 10, and like he did there. I mean, he just missed getting a roll on that, and he could have pinned him inside the 10. What they wanted to do, they want to avoid the return at all costs. So from the 17-yard line, Kelly will put it down the quarterback. He's blitzed by Sarika, missed, and here's Mesikar is going to get him. Make Mesikar with the sack as he pushes the quarterback, Kelly, out of bounds. Well, actually, Mesikar with a nice play, but I'll tell you, give some credit to Sarika. He stays home with the defensive end. Here's a look. It's a reverse, and Sarika, he doesn't get faked out by it. He stays home, which is his job, and he comes in and puts some pressure on him. And Lackawanna, their defense is just on their toes. So that was Kinsey, obviously, that was pushed out of bounds. And was he looking to pass? Yeah, he was, he was looking to throw it. But as I said, Lackawanna's defense on their toes today. They didn't bite on that one. Sarika, just a real solid football player. Chris Kelly, second down and long. And a running play <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> oh, we're going to send it down. Hey, <laughs> Vonzek, as he has Chris Domenico. We're here with Albion High School football coach Dick Domenico. Dick, congratulations on a very prestigious honor bestowed upon you. You are the head coach of the New York State All-Star High School football team. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's a, it's a thrill, and I'm really looking forward to it. Tell our viewers just what is the Governor's Cup. Uh, it's a, the top high school players of New York versus the top high school players in New Jersey. Um, they play, they'll play in July. Right now it looks like it's going to be at Rutgers on July 9th. Uh, should be a great, great event for high school football in New York and New Jersey. How about some of the Section 6 players or Western New York players who may be participating? Well, right now uh, we have a meeting in the December in Albany. Uh, right, there's, a, there's a ton of great players in both areas, so uh, we're, we're going to have our hands full picking it. But uh, right now it looks like we're going to try to get our team from the Golden 50, which is the top 50 players in, uh, in New York State uh, as far as... Uh, uh, who and when and where, we haven't announced that yet, but uh, there's some great ones out there, and we're excited about it. Well, Dick, it's a great honor. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now back upstairs. Well, we had a middle screen on third and ten that was thrown away, Mark, intended for Kinsey. Yeah, and Kinsey got held up at the line of scrimmage. Lackawanna is just real aggressive, real aggressive on defense. Lackawanna dangerous. They blocked the punt. They got a piece of the punt, and it hits at the 27 and rolls across the 30, and the Steelers will start in great field position. And like I said, Walter, just, you know, this is a different team today. They are just, I think they might have got a piece of that, but like I said, they are just so aggressive on defense today. Well, let's see if it was Harding who well, they just did it. well on the special teams. They're doing everything right. Here's a look at it here, coming in. And that's, and, that's what we, and that's what we didn't see the last two weeks was discipline out of this team. And they are focused today, their defensive unit. Looks like Henry Porowski, 76, was the man in there, as you see Porowski. And he got a little piece of that ball and avoided contact, which is hard to do when you're flying in there. 31-yard line, Lackawanna in business again. Up 8-0. Uh, They've they got to put some points on the board there, Walsh. He gets down here a couple times. Well, they're playing a great game. Probably the best game of the year so far, Lackawanna, with 5.40 to go in the half. That's wide open. Dover's got it. 25 and pushed out of bounds. A quick 7. <laughs> and uh, there we see Lambert's a little bit gun-shy. He knows what Dilbert can do now. He's got a couple of looks at him. He's 15 yards off the picture. You don't even see him in the picture. Dilbert, you know, throw that one all day until Lambert comes up. He's got to come up and play a little bit tighter on defense. Or they're going to kill him with that play. Smart call there. Wow, Coach Bill Brown, who doubles as the athletic director at Jamesville, DeWitt, they have to be shocked along with his coaching staff. Jay Graham and Rick Townsall, Bill Hartzell, Jim Costello. They were very confident coming into this game. Second down and three. Long way to go in this game. And Kowalski 
to Turner. Turner looking for the first down yardage. He'll pick up the first down as he's game tackled and dragged out near the 20. The Steelers uh, really have a big edge in first down. They'll take that all day long. I tell you, they are just execute their offensive line, really sustaining their blocks, but give some credit to the guys in the backfield. Dickinson and Lee have been leading Turner around the corner this whole first half, just doing a real nice job. And the main thing Lacaron is doing is keeping the football away from James Earl DeWitt and frustrating them. When they've had the football, James Earl DeWitt has not been able to move the football. Look at Wade Turner, and he's only a junior. Scary. One of the best backs in western New York. One of the finalists for the HGTV Top Underclassman of the Year Award. Sarika turned around and dropped the football. And he's one of the finalists, Wade Turner, for the Underclassman of the Year. Kowalski also is one. And Herman. Yeah, Herman from that week. Herman, the quarterback for week. Having a, having a great <laughs> But here's a look. Hey, this is the guy, Sarika. That's the guy you're going to look for today. They're going to have a tough time because, like I said, with the two big receivers, Gilbert and Dickinson, Sarika's going to, he's going to be open today. Catchable ball. And that's a nice little pass. Just that little dump to your tight end. Well, they've got the Rams, the Red Rams on their heels because they don't know if they're going to want to pass on first down now. Passing on first, running on second. Here's Turner. He's got a little crease, and he picks up five to the 15-yard line. Wade Turner. We have not seen Kima Dickinson involved in the offense much. So, uh, he hasn't carried the ball, but uh, like I said, well, they've been leading him through the hole. Now, Wade really follows his offensive lineman well. A patched-up offensive line for Lackawanna. Corey Pokigo in there with Reese, Kowalski, Kavanaugh, and Dean. The usual starter is Sam Pone, Messicar, Davis, all out. Third down and five. Two players will shift in motion left. Lee and Dickinson, they'll probably run left. And it's a bootleg left, a nice call here, and Kowalski fumbles out of bounds and be shy of the first down yardage. I'd like to see Turner have that ball first, but it looked like a pretty nice play. I tell you, they put a lot of firepower on the side here. As you can look at it, I mean, if Dickinson, Taylor's going that way, they got Lee lined up there. The Ritz got him saying, oh, no, here they come. And then Kowalski takes it himself. It's only the guy yard short of that first down. And that, that by the way, was Dick Domenico on the interview. Uh, yeah, and, and I'll tell you that right here. So this, is a, this is definitely the biggest play of the first half right here. They get a first down here and go and get some points. It's going to be tough for DeWitt because DeWitt stops him here. The momentum swings a little bit. This is a big, big, big play. Man, DeWitt's been averaging over 30 points again. They got the big goose egg on the board. Fourth and one. Lackawanna up 8 nothing and threatening. Long count. Turner. Got the first down. Boy, he's strong at 171. Strong leg push. And that was strong. That was a nifty run right there because Wolfanger, he shoots that gap. And that time he did get through the gap. He, start, he shoots through. They know they're going to look. They're going to look at it. And look at this. Turn it right over top of him. Just an heads up football play. But he would have been dropped for a loss. Wouldn't have got that first down. That was a big play for Lackawanna. Lackawanna has been jinxed, snake bitten in the playoffs. Always seem to lose a tough one. But can they do it? Section 6 has had a B finalist the last two consecutive years. Maybe this will be three straight years if the Steelers win. Here's Kowalski. Left side, 10, 5, and go! Touchdown! And Lackawanna on fire here, Michael. I mean, they're on fire. The old student body left right there. Well, the whole Lackawanna team looks like they pulled on that one. I tell you, they're just getting off the blocks, and everyone is, it looks like they're having a lot of fun. Their blockers are getting out. And just kind of going to rest. Look at this play. Everyone's going. It's Ross Dickinson. Everyone gets better Kowalski, and he is good at just getting in the end zone. He's got a good nose for that goal line. Injured Steeler on the field. Look at that block. Good block by West there. And Kowalski, what an effort to get in the end zone. Oh, Lackawanna can ill afford this. That looks like 60. Robert Kavanaugh, the starting center. We're going to look at Kowalski. I'll tell you, he's had, he's had some big games last week. Really came through in the clutch. And again today, he, he wants a victory here. Well, I can't believe it. I mean, after... Talking to Bill Brown and, and looking at that team warm up and the size of their line uh, outweighing the Steelers heavily. Offensive line to the Steelers defensive line that Lackawanna is up in this football yeah, game. We, you know what they're saying on that, Walt. You know, you, you read it on the paper, but you play it on the field. And I'll tell you one thing. You know, they did. I mean, they have some impressive stats. Like I said, their backfield, I mean, incredible as that's far as the yards they average a carry. But that's number 58. 
apparently the injured player, Deion Davis. Yeah, we're looking for Lackawanna to have a breakout game, though, and this is it, Walt. They, they haven't played that well in the uh, fir first two playoff games. Well, Deion was scheduled to start, and then he was taken out of the starting lineup, you remember. Now he's back in there. You said he had some type of injury? Uh, so Moore told you before the game, now Deion's back in there. Now he's hurt again. They go for two. Kowalski rolling right. No chance on that one. He short hopped the receiver, Gilbert, and that one had no chance. However, you really have to be impressed by Lackawanna, and if you're from the James Road to Wood area, east of Syracuse, you got to be scratching your head, Mark. Here's your team averaging over 30 points a game the last three playoff games. Well, I'll tell you, if Lackawanna keeps it up, well, they're going to be on their way to the carrier zone, but it's been a while. Yeah, last, the last team to get there was obviously Springville, and they go on and they win it. I mean, it's tough getting to the finals, but they win it, and it's thanks thanks to the big back, Rendell. I mean, look at this. This is, this is Capella right here with a big run. And I'll tell you, Springville, yeah, yeah, Springville, there's Rendell. It's his, his jersey last year, but I'll tell you, what a big, big victory. I was talking to Coach Chappie. He said it's one thing to get there, but to win it, it's actually hard to believe they actually win the state championship. All right, let's go back to last week. This week, Lackawanna 14 nothing lead. Last week it was Hornell 12 nothing over Lackawanna. Same situation, Hornell out playing Lackawanna thoroughly, and Lackawanna comes back at the late score before half, goes on rallies, win the football game. Can the same thing happen here? Well, I think it's a little bit different because last week it was Lackawanna that was down Walton. They have the big players to make the big plays. Hornell played a great game, you know, give them a lot of credit. But, uh, you know, today Lackawanna's got some big players. The other side does too, but it's going to be a tough comeback against Lackawanna where they're playing. Watch out on the kickoff return, Kinsey at the 10. And they meet him and drop him at the 20, 21 yard line. And McKinsey lack of concentration there, not catching the football on the kickoff, and that hurt him. Oh, yeah, and they just didn't get off to a quick start today. I mean, they're, you know, they're, their offense, they've only, I think they've had maybe one first down. They're just not executing. I'm and, not sure if they even have a first down. And I think one of the, one of the real big factors is, you know, we look at Dwayne here. Well, they play most of their, most of their home games, I believe, were played in the Carrier Dome. And they actually, they play inside a lot. You know, they're playing the sideline, and there's the conditions. Look at that guy. I mean, that tells you how cold and how slippery it is down there. It's one of our camera people working very hard, and they're working under adverse conditions. Lambert, and they've got to do another game after this, so it's going to be a, a tough goal for the camera people. No first downs in the game so far. No first downs. No first downs. Like I said, playing in these conditions, which, you know, maybe they're not used to playing it because they play inside a lot, and it's, uh, you know, it's a lot nicer playing inside on a day like today, but Lackawanna used to this type of conditions playing in Western New York and, and actually practiced all week this week at UB. And you know we had a lot of, you know, rain and, and uh, inclement weather this week. So Lackawanna is ready to go. Two-yard gain for Lambert, second down and eight. We haven't seen that good arm of Chris Kelly come alive yet. He has had a drop. Here's the option play. Drop by Lambert. Ball loose. And Lambert picks it up as Messicar covers them for a loss of a yard. It was, we were just talking about it, the conditions. <laughs> they, they just didn't look like they wanted to run that play there. I mean, Kelly gets out, kind of puts the pitch out there. Lambert didn't have any blocking. He didn't handle it that well. And it's slippery. And he's lucky he got on that one because I'll tell you, Mr. Messicar was right there at his doorstep. He's ready to pick up another fumble. Boy, he kicked it forward. He's real fortunate that that ball didn't score it out again. Red Rams in some trouble here. No first downs. Who would have ever believed that? He could have made a million bucks on that one. Quarterback Kelly fumbles the football. Let's see if it's really the fumble. He's down. A huge loss on the play as he lost his right. play. I mean, I'll tell you, the Rick got lucky on that call, Walt. It looks like he actually drops it as he's going down. If we can get a look at that, he drops it. He mishandles the snap. I'm telling you, the conditions are really hurting him. And you can see Kelly just kind of shaking his head. He drops the snap there, picks it up. And then he goes down. The ball squirts out. They give, him, they give it to him, but they're awful lucky. So now the punting unit uh, will come on again, and Lackawanna with the dangerous return men. Punting it away is Kirk Wolfanger. Rushes on, they don't get it this time, they hit the punter, rough him, and that's going to be a first down. And here comes Gilbert, you call this back, it doesn't matter what he does. Derek Gilbert out to the 25, I believe it's going to be an automatic first down. And that really, really changes the complexion here of this first yeah, half. If we get a look at it, well, that's really Lackawanna's first mental mistake. But I tell you, you're more aggressive than you can as a coach. You can't tell him not to be aggressive. And uh, West just misses the ball. He didn't actually hit the kicker, but just missed the ball. So, you know, their defense is playing aggressive. As a coach, you can't tell him not to. But uh, you, you got to be you got to be careful because you don't want to swing the momentum and you don't want to give this DeWitt team a chance to get on track because, as we know, they have some good offensive firepower and they could get a touchdown and make this one close. And a look at Phoenix. They can get right back in the football game. All Lackawanna had to do was stay away from the punter and they were going to have the ball inside the 
35 yard line of the Red Rams. Yeah, and Phil Moore and his staff not happy with that because he's looking at the clock saying a minute 39, almost played a perfect half offensively and defensively, and hopefully this mistake doesn't cost him. And Janesville DeWitt, the Red Rams are so talented that you just cannot give them these kind of opportunities. That's their first first down of the first half, to be a penalty too. So from the 30-yard line, we get a nice matchup down here with Turner and uh, Kinsey man-to-man. -man. He's going to get a little help, but there's two of the finest football players in high school. Option to Lambert. It's wide open. Good block. Lambert to the 40. One man to beat, and he's dragged down. Nice job by Larry Lewis. And what a block there. And around section six coming up at the half with all the news, notes, standings, rankings, and the top ten performances of the week, and there were some good ones last week. Speaking of, speaking of good ones, I'll tell you, Walt, that was a good tackle there by Larry Lewis. They couldn't if he had the speed to catch him because uh, Lambert was on his way to the end zone. And that's how their team can play. This time the Steelers bottle it up, almost got the handoff, and they throw the back, back for a no-gain situation on the play. And again, it's Lambert. Lambert and the clock continues to wind down with 106 remaining in the first no half. But I think we were still with the win. I mean, they had that big physical offensive line wall, but uh, the plays, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to run it up the middle. Those aren't developing that quick. And Lackawanna, on the other hand, is going with the, the pitches to turn and trying to get outside. And you think to it with their big backs and their speed, they'd be running the ball a little bit more outside. And that's stopping the clock. You can see the lower right portion of your corner screen, 45 seconds to go on the half, second down and 10. Quarterback Kelly throws wide open, ball tipped away. Nice job by Kima Dickinson. The receiver was all set to cradle it for the first down. But Kelly is having an awful time taking that snap from the center. He's bobbling. He bobbles this one and then picks it up and loses his concentration, just throws it out.